Welcome to the Arts Access Florida podcast. I'm your host, Brianna Jackson. Arts Access Florida is a comprehensive initiative designed to shine a spotlight on your neighborhood's diverse arts organizations. Each episode will highlight their programs and more importantly, amplify the voices of the people they impact. Conversations, community, and connections. That is value in engaging with your local arts organizations. Arts access equals arts access. Support for Arts Access Florida comes from the Community Foundation of Tampa Bay, championing philanthropy, encouraging and connecting givers to bring lasting good, investing in education and economic mobility. Learn more at cftampabay.org. In this special bonus episode of Arts Access Florida, I speak with Emily Capes, an art curator for the James Museum of Western and Wildlife Art. We discuss their newly released Arts for Conservation exhibition and how these artists use their talents to help shed light on the challenges facing habitat and wildlife conservation. Hi, Emily. Can you tell us a little about the Arts for Conservation exposition? We opened March 13th and it runs through May 23rd. So the Artists for Conservation exhibition is a group wildlife art show that is juried. So the Artists for Conservation organization, which is made up of about 500 artists from, um, I think it's about 30 countries. Their group has an annual competition each year and the winners from the competition uh, go on tour for an exhibition. And so we're hosting that exhibition and it's some of the best art from this organization. And Artists for Conservation is a a group of the world's top conservation artists. So the, the leading art group supports the environment through their art, through education, through programs, and they really want to address habitat and wildlife um, challenges with conservation. And so it's about awareness. It's about the singular focus of having so many different artists from all over the world, um, you know, bring their perspective to to the exhibition um, with with showing animals from all over the world as well. And there are 63 of them in the, the, the um, exhibition, but they all have this singular focus of making the world a better place through conservation and through education. So it's a special exhibition um, with with all sorts of art. It's mostly paintings and sculptures, but I think the the range of perspectives from all these artists is really interesting and and styles and animals because these these animals are from all over the world. So I think it's really fun. Um, The kids that have come through so far have just loved it. Yes, and this is the perfect time to visit And I remember just seeing all of the art pieces and just being so taken away of how colorful and vibrant and realistic a lot of these pieces are. Uh, When we spoke at the museum, you uh, showed me this art piece by Carrie Cook, and it's Mm -hmm. a painting of an orangutan. And this was such a vibrant uh, painting. Can you, for those listening, can you describe what this painting looks like? And maybe we can see it in our minds. (laughs) Sure. <laughs> so this orangutan portrait is, um, it's very close up. It's a, it's a very vertical oriented piece. I think the orangutan's eyes are just so intense and, um, and, and, and tell such a story that I think people are really drawn in to the story. And, and the orangutan's name is Jam. And Jam was named by his trainers at a Hollywood entertainment compound. And the artist really wanted to bring to light the idea that um, non-human primates deserve uh, freedom from harm and um, a high quality of life, uh, just like everyone else. And when the the trainers at the um, at the compound decided to stop working with apes, he was allowed to go uh, to actually a sanctuary here in Florida for for apes, and he was reunited with his mother. And I I did talk with the artist um, after uh, you and I spoke, and it turns out that 
he, they did remember each other oh. um, and they were reunited. Um, they, you know, it took them a little while to warm up, but they absolutely remembered each other. They're both healthy and doing well today. So it is a really special story. But, uh, but I think the, 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 the cool reds and purples and blues um, in the, the thick brush strokes that make up the painting just really draw you in and, and you really just um, are, are seeing this very sweet face. And then to hear a little bit about name and, um, and his story uh, just helps it, I guess, become more relevant or make it more personal. Yes, that is for sure one of my favorite pieces. And it just, his eyes just speak so much to the viewers. Well, John Siri Lester was a signature member of the Artists for Conservation group for many years. So we, when we booked this exhibition to come here, it was a couple of years ago. It turned out though that right around that same time, um, John Siri Lester, who, who lives here in Florida, got cancer. And so when he was diagnosed, he did paint for a while, um, but he was in and out of the hospital and we kept in touch with him. But unfortunately, he passed away um, close to a year ago. It's been about 10 months right now. And so when we were planning the exhibition last year and, and laying out the show, we knew we wanted to do something special for John. And, and John is special way more so than just being a, a member of Artists for Conservation because he's a part of our museum's permanent collection. There's about 30 paintings by John Siri Lester at the James, in the James collection. And um, there's several of them currently on display in our wildlife gallery here. And we've known John for many years and Tom and Mary James have been purchasing art from John and, and following his career for a couple of decades. So his loss was really tough. And of course we, we know Susie very well as, as well. And so um, we wanted to do something special. So he was one of the best wildlife painters of his generation. So I chose about 15 works of art from the James Collection to show alongside the Artists for Conservation exhibition to really um, pay tribute to John, um, to really just explain some of his artistic legacy and, and how amazing uh, a painter he really was. And he was also very into conservation. Um, he and Susie raised uh, millions of dollars over the years uh, through the sales of their paintings, through being a part of different conservation organizations. And so it was a real passion for them as a couple and Susie continues that today. So um, we have a tribute to John Siri Lester uh, that's within the Artists for Conservation exhibition um, that I, I think helps to pay tribute to him and what all he was able to do um, over his lifetime. Yes, absolutely. And these art pieces really showcase his best work and um, his legacy. Uh, I remember coming across the, the Black Jaguar painting. And I remember when we were speaking, you said he is known for being able to paint atmosphere. And you can certainly see that in every detail of this Jaguar painting. Um, this painting shows a black jaguar in action, right? I believe he's like leaping into a river and you see every stage of movement from the foam in the water to the, the droplets. It's, it's so beautiful. <laughs> he really, he is known for painting atmosphere and weather and setting mood. It is really difficult to paint <laughs> and mist and light rain and, um, and, and water spraying and he, does it uh, with the best of them. Mm -hmm. So when this black jaguar painting was was one of my favorites, and because the the black jaguar is so dark against a very dark background, a real showcase of how John can paint dark on dark images and just the subtleties that he was able to incorporate, and then it has this dark mood to it. I just love that he can can paint atmosphere mm -hmm. so well, and you see that with a lot of the paintings in the tribute from, from misty scenes with gorillas um, to tigers running through water and some of the historic hunting scenes even from, from that group, they just really have a great atmosphere to them. So he, uh, he knew what he was doing and he and led workshops around the country teaching other artists. And it's such a great initiative that they had um, and, and a passion for decades painting together, teaching together, and um, sharing their love of wildlife and conservation um, with a new generation of artists. Wow. 
he has certainly left his legacy through all of his work and and community outreach and that is truly amazing what is your hope for this exhibition for those who visit what do you want them to walk away feeling i hope that visitors to our museum will feel inspired that they'll maybe want to look into conservation efforts themselves potentially i think there's a lot to learn and i think there's a lot of um, avenues to explore and the, the exhibition is just a jumping off point for it so i think people will appreciate the beauty but there's also a, a deeper message of really helping to protect our world and knowing that we're sharing our planet with so many amazing creatures that are, are beautiful and unique. Um, and uh, there's gotta be a way to do that yeah. together in harmony. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I, I hope people will, will come away uh, with a renewed sense of, of, of urgency because some of these animals are endangered. And for families who come in to see the exhibition, we have a family guide uh, with um, activities for kids to be on the lookout for as they walk through the exhibition. Uh, from uh, from sketches to um, scavenger hunt and kind of a, a deeper dive into some of the animals. Wonderful. Well, Emily, thank you so much for your time. And we appreciate you being on the Arts Access Florida podcast. Thanks for having me. As wildlife conservation continues to be a pressing issue in today's society, it's so inspiring to know that there are people out there who are creating art pieces that advocate for the betterment of our natural habitats, and that there are museums, like the James Museum of Western and Wildlife Art, that are helping to share that mission and art with the world. More information on our guest and photos from the James Museum can be found in our show notes. I'm Brianna Jackson, and you have been listening to the Arts Access Florida podcast. This show is a product of WUSF Public Media with the help of our founding sponsor, the Community Foundation of Tampa Bay. Our show is produced by Aaliyah Moffitt, Chandler Balcom, and Leslie Laney. A special thanks to our editor, Scott Walkler, and our entire engineering team. You can find out more information, performances, and other content that our local arts groups are creating by following us on Facebook or Instagram and visiting our website, artsaccessflorida.org. That's arts, A-X-I-S-F-L.org. Copyright 2021, WUSF Public Media.